Well, hello everybody. I hope everybody's doing really well on this lovely day. We're having beautiful, beautiful weather here. Just amazing stuff that's happening around here. Um, I wanted to make myself something today, so I wanted to show you what I was going to work on. So I just popped in to do that. I made this journal, and I used envelopes to make these fun painty papers. Now these um, have some uh, color crayon resist on them and I will give you a link to this uh, the flip for this journal so that you can see everything and um, catch up about it. The thing of it is is that I I wanted to do the painty paper thing but I use a planner that is um, a traveler's notebook size planner, um, one of the, the kind where you can take the notebooks out. So I wanted to make myself an envelope, pretty painted envelope traveler's notebook insert. So to do that, of course, we have to paint some envelopes and do some other things. And I thought I'd show you today how I was going to do that. So. First, you have to have some envelopes, and this is all junk mail. It's it's, it's all junk mail. Um, I have to have scissors. I just uh, save all of the envelopes that come in. My mother saves hers for me too, and you can just cut the end of it open like so. Now, frankly, this one has got the security envelope stuff on the inside. And for what I wanted, I did not want that. So I decided that all of my envelopes had to be just plain white on the inside. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to open up a bunch of envelopes. I love the sound of the envelopes with these windows in it. They have such fun, crinkly noises. Another thing, way you can do it is to just very tinily, tinily, what a great word, cut off the end, just a little slice off the end of your envelope, and it'll open up. Now, an envelope like this, if you want to, you can seal it shut and it'll have that edge on it. Um, I don't, I'm not worrying about those. I just wanted the, the envelope to fit in my traveler's notebook. So, Okay, so now we have a little mess, but we have four envelopes that will open up so we can paint. That's the idea behind it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make these fun painty papers and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I think most of you know that I tend to use um, freezer paper. Oh, where's my container? Uh, sorry, I didn't think about showing this to you again. I like to use freezer paper. It's plastic coated on one side. And the deal is, is that that way I can move it and keep going. So. What I've unrolled is a piece of freezer paper. And we are going to just lay out our envelopes like so, so that we can paint them. And I am using an old set of really cheap Crayola paints. It's just a Crayola watercolor paint. And as you can see, I've about used up a couple of my colors. So uh, I'm 
going to have to switch to some other paint. I've got all kinds of cra of watercolor sets, including a set of tubed watercolors that we got recently for 87 cents or something. So what I'm going to do, I think I'll leave it right here so that you can actually see it. I have big jugs of water because if you don't clean your brushes off in between your colors, you're going to end up with a lot of mud. So what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to water down my paint. And then we're just going to paint. Now, I like lots of colors. I don't like just one color. So, That's too thick. I like to water it down. Okay, now one of the things that will happen is, is that the paint will go through, the water will go th soak through the envelope. I don't paint both sides of these. I just paint the one side. And of course the plastic doesn't paint, so you just kind of water it down and as you can see it just oh that whole envelope is uh, plastic on the inside I did not notice that before so it's not going to do much it's just going to be one of those things that um, it'll dry but it won't be very now, if you get your paint too thick, it's it's going to be sort of, it doesn't bleed through the paper. So just add some more water. And you notice that I do not take a lot of care. I just, I just want some color on my pages. I'm going to use this notebook for notes or that kind of thing. Oh, we want some more red. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about this plastic coated freezer paper is that it will just let it dry on it. And now, it is kind of like the fabric that I painted. You don't want to move it real around a lot right away. Let me just get that face done. And then this is just kind of a tie-dye, watercolor tie-dye. Let's call it that, watercolor tie-dye. This envelope is very weird. Not only is it um, plasticky coated on that one side, it um, doesn't want to, um, it doesn't, it, it's got this texture in it. Okay, that's it. That's all we have to do is, is just get a little paint on our envelope. And then they, of course, have to dry. So what I like to do, and the reason I use the freezer paper, is because I can just pick it up and move it. Now that's out of my way, it will dry, and we can... Have fun with the rest of our stuff. So now I'm actually going to make the insert. So I've got these lovely dry papers and like I said you can see it doesn't bleed through completely. It's not it's not as dark on the back side but this is just a junk journal type traveler's notebook thing that I'm making for my own purposes and it's just 
It's got fun colors and it makes fun noise. So the next thing is that Traveler's Notebooks, the standard size Traveler's Notebook is a little different size than some things. Um, it is not an eight and a half by 11 sheet folded in half. It is actually Um, it's in centimeters for one thing. Um, it is 22 by 23 centimeters. The 22 spot is folded. So the height from here to here needs to be 23 centimeters. And the width from here to here needs to be, if you've got it open all the way, 22, but if it's folded in half like an envelope, it needs to be 11. So um, I had to trim down most of my envelopes a little tiny bit. You see that? Yeah. Um, the I had to take off just a little bit off of a lot of the envelopes. Now don't throw that away because there's always something we can do with that. Um, this one needs to come off this end. long by 11 folded wide so this one this little tab that's sticking out right here I may have to trim it down just a little bit because it's a touch over 11 and I guess I could have left them sticking out but I didn't want to I was I don't know, being weird so now I have to have a cover piece so this is where we need the 23 inches, 23 inches, 23 centimeters tall. By 22 wide. Okay. I wonder if that piece of cardstock was not was already cut. I may have your numbers all wrong. Oh dear. These all have to be 21 inches. 21 centimeters. 21 centimeters by 22 centimeters. Okay. I'm going to turn the uh, camera off for a minute and trim down these envelopes so that you don't have to watch that forever and ever. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, just to, to reiterate this the the measurements from top to bottom in a traveler's notebook insert standard size, it's 21 centimeters. From edge to fold is 11, so if it is open, you need 22 centimeters. So, all of my envelopes need to be trimmed to 21 for the height and 11 for the width. So 21 and we'll check for the 11 but most of them were all under 11 except for little tabs that stuck out. Now another thing that I wanted to do was to round the corners I just find they don't get caught on stuff just as much when the edges are done. So, for the cover now, we need 21 
centimeters and maybe you know a little smidge over by 22 because it's not folded yet okay so 21 tall 22 wide because we're going to fold it just like so and you could score it and by the way sorry for my inky fingers but that's just the way it is you could score it with your scoreboard i just fold it in half i might run my bow and folder on it then i am going around the corners put together our insert we have our cover Let's set it aside and I love the little plastic windows but I don't necessarily want that on the outside of my um, sheet so this one doesn't have any and I think I will probably flip them so that they have um, windows every other And I'm kind of putting my inserts in here color coordinated it's that is all if it really matters then you should think about it it does not matter to me like I said I want to use this more for a note taking kind of thing than anything you could use it to doodle in and now so I have this nice Oh, I love this edge. Just that edge just comes out really fun. Okay, I'm going to put my cover on. Like so. Now, I have this fun ruler that has a zero in the middle. And measures out from each end. Um, it's, I think, called a centering ruler. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's just that that's. It's, I really like it because this way I don't have to think about my um, measurements I can just make sure that both corn edges are this one right now is at like four and an eighth and I have a center dot and then I'm going to go down an inch and a half and an inch and a half now I have more I'm just going to do a simple pamphlet stitch to hold this together but um, I do mine a little differently than some people. So uh, I have five holes. And I have this lovely little pokey tool that I'm going to put on a hole right in the crease and stick it through. Now, you want to make sure you hold on to things real well. And don't poke your fingers. If you have trouble, you can use some kind of little clip to hold this. I usually don't. I can usually hold on to it and stick it through. And I do kind of fold the book closed. I'm sorry that you can't see what I'm doing, but by folding the book closed a little bit, I get it to line up on the edge of the spine. And some people use a um, old um, phone book to get the holes put in. Now, rather than take a chance and letting them go everywhere, I'm just going to set it down. I'm going to use um, wax linen, and I need at least two, probably close to three lengths. Of wax linen and I do not have a book binders needle I just use a tapestry needle it has a blunt end but it has a big hole 
so. Okay. Now I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to go out through the top hole. And you see I went all the way through everything and I'm going to give myself three or four inches. Then I'm going to go back in through the next hole and if you don't end up going through the holes directly you sometimes have to wiggle to get through your holes and sometimes I have to kind of close my uh, signature to find where my needle's at. See here I've, I had my needle was clear back there and then I just put one on at a time until if you put one sheet on at a time you'll end up going through the neck the hole all the way. And I just pull it up through. And I go back out through the next hole. This is just an in and out kind of stitch. And back in through the next one. It's the going in that always has problems and you, like I said just open it up find your needle and stick it through the next layer of next page your signature Now the next row is a little easier okay. and this is one of the things that I do very much differently than a lot of people do. it. I bring my thread around the bottom of my insert. You see it on this one. Okay the reason being is that I always seem to have pages that want to do weird things at the bottom. So by bringing it around, going back through the hole to the outside, now don't yank that thread down real tight, just pull it snug. Okay? And then once again, the one you came out of, the next one you go back in. And usually on the second pass they're all lined up so it's kind of easy to get back and forth through there. Just don't split your thread. That's, if you're using something that's like embroidery floss or something like that, be careful because if you split your threads then you'll have trouble. And then what I do is I tie my threads at this at the top edge right here. Now you can bring it around and tie it back here. Well, let's do that one this time. We'll just tie it back here. You see right here we're going to tie it right there. Now I usually leave these tails because you can do several things with them. You can put beads on them. If you tie it at the very top edge, you can use them as bookmarks. You can put some dangles on them and use them as bookmarks. There. So now I have my fun little traveler's notebook insert made with watercolored envelopes. just like in this journal that I have right here. Okay, now I told you to save your little pieces like this because they can make really cute little, let's see which one do I want to use. Oh, I like this one. 
We're going to just take a piece of this like so. I'm going to fold it in half. No, oh, that's not thick enough. So we're going to need a bigger piece so that we can have two folds. I'm going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again so that it's a little stiffer. And we can put it right here like a little tab and staple it on. Now how fun is that? Okay, and we can do that again at the further back. Yeah, this one will do. Let's trim it off. Okay. Oh, let's go back here. I'll drop down a little bit. Oh my, my stapler didn't want to staple. Okay, so that is just my really quick little insert for a traveler's notebook insert with painty papers. So you guys have fun. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Um, please give this a fun, fun, a fun, thumbs up, a thumbs up, please. Um, Please come by and um, make a comment so I know you've been here. Uh, let me know what I can do to make a better video. Uh, I'm always open for suggestions. So please have fun. Please enjoy this. And I'll be back soon with something new.